Hi church family, welcome to an Ash Wednesday reflection on this Ash Wednesday and hopefully we'll be doing some reflections on the Wednesdays during Lent and can you believe it's Lent already and today is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of our fast for Lent. And so let's just pray as we begin. Loving God, thank you for gathering us together in this way, even though we might be meeting at different times and listening in different places. Help us to be aware of our togetherness as a church, even as we remember more than a year ago being together in that same building. Help us to remember the people who stood and sat around us and to think of them in our prayers as we journey together on our way to crucifixion and resurrection. So we look forward to Easter and prepare ourselves as we pray to you, as we cleanse ourselves, as we renew ourselves in you. So be with us, we pray at this time. Amen. So I welcome you to an Ash Wednesday Reflection. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is start learning a new song, which I hope will be a good, a good uh, theme song for our, for our Lenten journey and for our Easter weekend. Oh, oh, humble carpenter, down on your hands and knees. Look on your handiwork and build a house that you may dwell in me. So you with 
sweat upon your face Oh, build the table that I too may join you in the Father's place Oh, in the Father's place Like most of those songs that are new and unfamiliar, it'll hopefully get better and easier to sing as we get used to it. And so this is the season of Lent, and uh, I've chosen there's a theme verse that just sort of jumped out at me as I was reading Psalm 51 the other day. This verse from Psalm 51. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. And what I was really thinking about is God's desire for us to enjoy our relationship with him, but also to have a restored and renewed relationship with him it's a relationship that sounds so strange, but it depends on God's sustenance for its energy. And sometimes at Lent, we uh, get into the Lent repent mode. And we think so much about what it means we're sorry for turning away from. And we, we become so religious that I think we need to just think about the true meaning of turning to God. And so, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray. Amen. So during Lent, we remember the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness in preparation for his ministry. But if you're good at maths, you'll notice that there are actually 45 days from Ash Wednesday through to Good Friday. And uh, that's a reminder that on, on the Sundays of Lent, you break from fasting. You celebrate the freedom that you have in Christ. So to fast on a Sunday doesn't make sense because Sunday is the day of the resurrection. It's the day of freedom and day of celebration. So in fact, what we're doing is five or six short fasts. And maybe if we're starting today and you don't have to be, be sort of defeatist, you can say, well, I'll just fast on Friday or you can just fast on Saturday or, or just one day, however you want to do your fast. If you want to skip your sugar or your coffee or whatever it is that you do, you just give that something up so that you can focus your prayers and your, your energy on, on loving Jesus and following him more, more closely. And so we take 40 days of fasting, divide it into five or six weeks. So maybe this week is a short one, Wednesday through, through Friday, and the next weeks are longer until we get to uh, Easter weekend and we celebrate. So as we go through Lent, we remember that Lent is about turning. Turning from, and if we look at Colossians 3, evil desire and greed, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, lying, all of those things that, that are part of our kind of ugliness that we sometimes have, a kind of all those things that, that reflect evil and evil nature. And we turn away from that and we turn towards the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. I mean, what a huge statement to be renewed in knowledge according to the image of the creator. We're becoming like Christ. We want to be more like Jesus, and that's what we're doing. Don't you love it when you get new clothes and they feel all crisp and clean? And you imagine those people preparing themselves for baptism, and, and on that baptism day after they've been baptized, they'll be put on new white clean robes to symbolize their purity and a new identity, and they might even burn the old robes as a sign of saying that I've put that away and I'm going to start a new life in Christ. And so at Lent, when we think about repenting, and we hear the words of people like John the Baptist in the wilderness saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. We think about repenting as being sorry for all the things that we've done in the past. And we think of, of repenting from our sins, which is a phrase that doesn't actually appear in the Bible very much. Because repent in Greek does not mean what it does in English. So in Greek, the word is metanoia. And reading from a dictionary here, to change one's way of life is the result of a complete change of thought and attitude with regard to sin and righteousness. To repent, to change one's way, repentance. Though in English, a focal component of repent is the sorrow or contrition that a person experiences because of sin, the emphasis in metanoia and metanoia seems to be 
more specifically, the total change, both in thought and behavior, with respect to how one should both think and act. That total change in thought and behavior with respect to how one should both think and act. So repentance is actually a changing of the way that you thought, of seeing things in a new way, of, of re-evaluating everything. <laughs> and so John the Baptist, as he preaches, says that the people should bear fruit worthy of repentance. And I like that kind of language. Jesus reminds us to act more like God, our parent, the one who, who gave birth to us, the one that we should reflect, as I spoke of in, in Colossians, that idea of of the image of God being made known in us. To bear fruit is to be the kind of tree that bears the kind of fruit that God would have us bear. And we can think of those fruits of the Holy Spirit, gentleness, patience, kindness, all those beautiful things. But as John goes on preaching to these Pharisees, he says, do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to himself, children to Abraham. And John would later then offer these hopeful words, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. As you think about those words, we realize that this is about what God can do and not about what we can do. So yes, we're called to bear fruit worthy of repentance, but there's something that John is pointing out to us, saying that God can take stones and turn them into children of Abraham. God can stake our hard hearts and turn them into hearts that are soft and full of love for God. And so as he talks about this promised Messiah who is coming after him, he says that I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We're reminded of Malachi chapter three, the last book of the Old Testament. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and, and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. And so we're reminded of the, the power of fire in the scriptures, not as a, a agent of punishment or suffering or torture, as if God was just crazy about torturing people and making their lives miserable, but as an agent of purification and cleansing. So on Ash Wednesday, we'd mark our foreheads with ash, and that would be a sign of humility and, and, and penance, but it's also a sign of us saying, Lord, I want to be purified or cleansed in that fire. Take away from me the evil desire and the greed and the anger and the wrath and the malice and slander and abusive language and instead, purify that away from me and clothe me with compassion, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Teach me to be someone who bears with others, forgiving others, clothed with love, binding everything together in perfect harmony, full of the peace of Christ and full of gratitude, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Imagine if we could be so easily transformed into people who are like that. And that's what we're doing when we when we put ashes on our foreheads. And even though we can't do the ashes thing today, we can remember what it would be like. And we can symbolically put that ash on our faces and say, Lord, burn away all of the ugliness and the brokenness inside me. So I invite you on this journey during the time of Lent to think of Psalm 51 verse 12 as your theme verse. Restore. Think of that word of how you need to be restored. When I think of restoring an old piece of furniture and uh, I have um, anxiety when we go past an, a junk shop or something because Heather loves junk and she buys it maybe that's why she chose me and then you have to um, end up sanding it and I say no that's your job I'm, I'm the, the saws and, and screws guy uh, but I always say that she must do the sanding and she loves to paint it and make it beautiful and something becomes new think of that restoring what about you needs restoring what about your life in God needs restoring and don't make it just these gigantic things but just think about the little things I saw such a nice saying about eggs on the internet today said that uh, if an egg is broken from the outside that brings death but if it's broken from the inside it brings new life think about how you can break through from the inside 
breakthrough as you're restored, as you're renewed? What is it that you need to restore, add to your life, renew in your life? Then the joy of your salvation, a reminder that our faith and our life in God is about joy, not about dourness and brokenness. How can we rejoice with God? And salvation that says that your salvation is a reminder that it is God who does the saving and not us. And so as we go through this Lent journey, we might think of trying to do it in our own power. But the whole act of fasting and praying is to say, God, I can't do this in my own power. I am not able to do this. So I'm trusting in you to take this stone and turn it into a child of Abraham, to take this stone and turn it into a child of God. And then the promise of sustaining and a willing spirit. And as we get to that willing spirit, fast, we'll think about Jesus going to the cross. Now he says, Father, your will be done. And how we can surrender our spirit to God's spirit to work in us. So I pray that this will be a helpful and meaningful journey. And I hope that by the time Easter, Easter weekend comes, we'll actually be able to meet sometimes, even if it's in a limited way at church. And I pray that this will be a meaningful journey for you. So I invite you as you uh, finish this to, to have to pause at these uh, two scriptures. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. And think about what you're turning away from. And these are all that list of things, earthly things, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed. Pause on this one and, and just pray to God, Lord, help me to see what I need to turn away from. Is it abusive language, malice, slander? What, what highlights in this passage for you? But then don't get stuck on the turning away from, but get stuck more hopefully on the turning towards holy and beloved, clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Well, don't be too hard on yourself. Begin this fast, this this week as you turn away from all of those things that have defined you for now and turn to God and ask God to define you and you. So I pray that this journey would be meaningful and helpful to all of us. As you remember that ash of Ash Wednesday. So we take ash and put it on our heads and say to God, Lord, I want to be burnt in that fire that purifies me. So let's pray. Loving God, help us to be purified and renewed. Help us to see the things that are in us that need to be cleansed away. The bad habits or the, or the thought processes that keep putting ourselves down, others down. Help us to turn to you and see your light and love so that the joy of your salvation would be restored in us and a willing spirit would be sustained in us. Help us at this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, thanks for joining me in my dining room office. You're in my cupboard. And uh, if I see my, my, that's my guinea pig cage. I've got two guinea pigs there. They make a little bit of noise. That's my messy dining room table where all the kids' schoolwork is for now. And that's the front door where you'd come in if you came to visit me. And down there is a little owl made of wood that holds the door open. Have a blessed day, a blessed Lenten journey, and I look forward to seeing you again in the weeks ahead. God bless.